All right, what's up? We have a new chapter of My Hero Academia. This is 228. Uh, we're continuing with our Liberation Army Commanders versus League of Villain Ruffians arc, uh, which has taken so many deviations from where we started that I don't even feel like reiterating them. I thought it was really funny in the last chapter just how uh, emotionally all over the map it was with intense flashbacks and diving into mental health and, and all sorts of other distress, and then it ends with, the fire guy is gonna fight the ice guy. <laughs> Tabby's like, all right, ice, sure. <laughs> Gotta warn you, I think I've gotten stronger, which means I can tell, but then the I can tell part is being spoken by someone else at the same time as him? I don't get what this dialogue bubble represents, but yeah. Iceman really came down in a hurry with his big ice gloves. What can Dabby do against this? You're tough too. Oh, I see. I see what's going on here. That's that's kind of unconventional to have across pages this this uh, dialogue bubble little bridge. Um, but whatever. All right, I understand it. Blue flame is make you the league's only wide attack pair. Why don't you unleash your fire straight away? It looks like you're waiting or something. Do you have an issue with your meta abilities? There's a freebie just for you. So, let's talk a little bit about Dabby. This is a good opportunity. He's got the blue flames, which uh, we assume are, are hotter and stronger and burning even stronger than Endeavor or Todoroki's red flames. Um, but we know that the whole idea behind Todoroki and, and Endeavor's insane kind of quirk breeding experiment was to get someone who has both the fire and the ice powers. Not because the ice powers they anticipate as being that strong, but because he anticipated correctly that you can't use too much of your fire powers. You get too hot, you burn out. So having the, the counterbalance between the two, the ice allowing yourself to cool off so you can use your fire powers full blast. But Dabby, we see, has this graft. He has skin stapled onto his body. So it looks like he's found another route through the damage it can cause you, which is just to take the damage and to burn yourself silly and then to get new skin and fight on like like it's not a big deal that you've got horrific lizard skin all over your body or whatever this is. Okay, so he's a little annoyed with this idea that the Iceman is suggesting. Do you have an issue with your meta abilities? Um, because I, I think he probably does. I think he's probably hurt himself and burned himself really badly in the past by using his fire. So he does kind of have this complex about it. Um, but it's not so much that he can't. He's going to do it. His big fire bellowing attack, I'm thinking, is coming right here. Ice melts. Is that so? Well, that could be a problem. They're both being so coy with each other. I like fights like this, where, where both of them are just like super coy, super obnoxious and arrogant. And then, as the reader, and this is something cool about this arc, too, I genuinely have no idea who's going to win. I, I really don't know who's going to win any one of these fights. I'm thinking it's going to be one where both sides take some substantial losses. And then, of course, when Gigantomachia comes in, it's going to be a whole other thing. So I don't know who's going to win. And then if they just keep boasting at each other like this again and again and again, it's going to be really satisfying when one of them suddenly can't walk the walk after talking so much talk. Okay, so, ooh, I manipulate ice, all ice. So this is a neat side effect of this urban environment that they're fighting in. There's a bunch of ice in the 7-Eleven uh, the looking place here. Yeah, you can see they grabbed all the bags of ice. So there's bags of ice cubes for sale. And then there's also cups with ice in them that you fill up with coffee from the coffee machine to get iced coffee. So he has that power too, creating this awesome ice dragon, perfecting this mega ability from meta ability for a long time, longer than most heroes. So no school for me. Grand Commander helped make me stronger. Quite a life, but kind of sad. Does not think your little campfire can melt my ice. See again, it's it's like the most standard shonen thing in the world, this kind of boasting. But in a situation like this, where you really don't know what's going to happen, it's it's quite fun. Um, 
and we kind of get these two different lived experiences being represented by the two where where he's like yeah my entire life has been around building up this quirk serving in the meta liberation army all preparing for this day where we're suddenly going to make our presence known in japan and dabby on the other hand his his quirk and his life have intersected in such a bizarre way, I'm sure. Such a way that both provided great struggles and great opportunities, but has led to, at least this is the uh, implication that the Iceman is making, uh, a much more ragged, unrefined control over his powers. Oh, a big spread. Fire and ice meeting. Looking like Aokiji versus... Uh, Akainu. It's a little One Piece reference for y'all. Shonen fans out there thinking I wouldn't come back at you with something like this. Um, but yeah, it takes out like a whole block. This is Compress trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the fight. Toga ran off to just now. Who knows where? What about twice? It's kind of cool. I'm always talking about how in, in arcs like this, I really appreciate when they can have a good consistency of physical space where the fights are happening, um, because then that enables them to much more naturally and, and with a bigger impact have, like, fights crossing over into fights. You know, you, like, punch some guy, he falls into the street. Whoa, I just landed in the middle of these other two known characters fighting. I love stuff like that. And, and it looks like they're kind of setting up that sort of possibility that all these fights are taking place around this town and it's very chaotic. I like it. I like it. Meanwhile, twice managed to find uh, Toga. Toga, who was about to pass out from blood loss after the brutal, brutal fight she had against um, Curious, the reporter lady, and her subordinates. Staggering into the shed, hiding. Twice miraculously finding her, because she just went into some random shed. And yeah, he's uh, he's not handling this well. They're buds, you know, they came up in the villain association together. His second voice coming through. I just get this cold as I was, crap, you're burning up. <laughs> She's covered in blood. This all be the enemy's blood, it's you. Give it up, the girl's dead. No way. There's no way they're actually killing off Toga. I'm not going to trust either of twice right now. I think he's in too much of a panicking state to make any uh, medical calls here. Gotta live. Give me the whole leak. Give me a place to belong. Only one who made me feel needed. Rip those zealots limb for limb for this. Okay. And then some of the Meta Liberation Army appears. So we're going to get a twice fight scene, which is pretty rare. Normally he's, uh, he's just kind of doing his thing. But uh, it's pretty rare that we actually get to see him battling people. So this will be interesting. And then we cut back to the uh, command tower where our grand commander is watching this whole thing. You can see in the distance the Dabi Iceman fight scene happening. Toga still lives, but for Curious's sake, she must die. This is the social media expert, who I guess has probably spy cameras all around town. Venability double. Is that simply the exact opposite of Toga? The man who cloned himself and nearly died doing so. Ooh. The man who lost sight of what makes him an individual. Living as you are meant to live and liberating your meta ability gives you nothing but a wounded soul. So these are clones of him? That's what he looks like, right? Am I wrong? Are these clones of him? I... What? How? How did they get those? How can he possibly fight against these? All right. Meta ability Anthropomorph can transform fridges, desks, and other human sized objects into puppets he controls. Five Destro. Two of him. Death of his gesture is tragic, but once the history repeat itself. Best use what you have. Why can't you see your own value? We're drafting you into the Liberation Army. 
Okay, interesting. Okay, so his clones, which I guess... Okay, so in the past, he was involved in this experiment using his quirk to, to clone himself into some trauma. We, we have like a vague sense of this from before, or at least I, I believe that I can remember something like this from like previous flashbacks involving twice, like in that chapter that he narrated and such. But I think what's going on here is uh, Tomoyasu, um, which is really similar to the name of the character in One Piece, <laughs> speaking of One Piece, um, who has the ability to turn things into people that he controls, has just turned a bunch of stuff into uh, things that look like, like puppets that look like clones of Twice. And he's using that to traumatize him so that they can capture him without resistance, use him to revive their former leader, I guess. And it's true, it seems like his quirk is really being underutilized. Uh, I mean, okay. All right, interesting. Very interesting, very interesting. I like this too, um, where it seems like maybe this was actually one of their primary goals of this entire League of Villains call-out was to kidnap twice, draft him into the Liberation Army, and use his quirk for their ends. I, I like that. When the villain's plan has these unobvious, seemingly secondary components that you realize kind of as they're happening, like, oh, wait, no, this is like actually the big deal of this whole thing. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I think these gorilla-looking henchmen that Tomoyasu has are also made out of, like, desks and fridges and stuff. Um, I still feel like this guy is all about gorillas, all about the uh, the Damon, Damon, what is his last name? Damon Auburn, whatever, you know, Blur Man, you know, the group gorillas, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the fact that he has these henchmen, the fact that his design is the way it is, and the fact that his company is called Feel Good Inc., I feel like it's not a coincidence that all of these things kind of line up with the band Gorillaz. Um, but we'll see if there's even more kind of hints to that. Yeah, good chapter. We got a very fun, straightforward fight scene, which is a nice change of pace from uh, all of the much more emotionally complex fight scenes. But then we went right back into the trauma of these villains um, and, and how their lives serve as kind of... Uh, exemplars of the sort of thing that the Meta Liberation Army is fighting against, which in many ways does very much legitimize the, the Meta Liberation Army and their sort of principles. So yeah, very cool. We will look forward to next week's chapter. I, I still have no idea where this arc is going to go um, in terms of its final outcomes and stuff, but it seems like we're in it for a long haul, that we're going to see the full extent of the League of Villains fighting the Meta Liberation Army. Um, and that's pretty cool. I'm, I think that's really awesome that they're able to, to go on such a tangent from the main plot. Okay, that's all for now.